Hello everyone. Welcome to the Ozark Outpost in Dixon, Missouri. This is Germany and the Soviet Union, July 1940. We started with the uh, Latin American influence role, which wound up being a Soviet coup in Central America. As you can see right there. That's a rather revolting development, but I guess it is what it is. Okay, Germany did not roll well at all this time. With their five tech rolls, all they managed was to move improved factories to stage two. Uh, they didn't do any spiring rolls because they're already full up. On uh, counter espionage, they did miss. So, Himmler is uh, making a list and checking it twice, I'm sure. He might even have Heydrich in there helping him. Okay, for their build, the Germans bought three medium panzers and three mech infantry, saving one Reichsmark for the future. Then Hitler called his general staff into the uh, Reichs Chancellery and said, gentlemen, our Blitzkrieg option expires at the end of this turn. If they don't do it before January 41, they lose the opportunity. So Hitler said, get in there and get it done. See if we can, how well we can see here. I think that works fairly well. So, The Germans started out with an attack on Belgium from Western Germany. And if you remember, there was all kinds of stuff in here in Western Germany, and all of it slammed into Belgium. Von Rundstedt got in there and captured the country for a loss of two infantry. He didn't even pause to take a breath before blitzing Picardy. They got everybody lined up again there, and then in there they went. Of course, they didn't have the commander's support for the blitz, because commander only has a combat move of one. So he doesn't have any... After that uh, initial attack, he doesn't have any move points left to blitz with. But they got into Picardy and captured that, uh, losing two mechanized infantry. Okay, then they set for the second impulse, so they did their non-combat moves. Then they did their combat move, which brought, uh, the commander was able to combat move. Picardy. Now, he couldn't go into Paris with him, but by moving up to here, he was at the launch point for all the aircraft that went into Paris, so he was able to uh, improve their uh, attack by plus one. So, they did their Blitzkrieg move into Paris and captured it with the loss of one infantry one light panzer, and one SS panzer. Uh, one of the French infantry defending the city uh, rolled a one, which gave him uh, target selection. So he chose to take out an SS panzer. Okay, as you can see them there, the Germans had three, four, 
five medium panzers and one SS panzer left over, sitting in Paris there. The commander, of course, is in Picardy because he couldn't go any farther. There's an anti-aircraft artillery uh, garrisoning Belgium. It's not exactly a, a great way to have things turn out, but it is what it is. All right, then Hitler decided to create Vichy France. So we went all around the board, getting everything fixed up. Um, I'm not going to go through all of it. You'll probably see it as we pan around in later turns. But uh, the important effect was Germany's income with... Uh, the French territories and uh, the Vichy territories has gone up to 43. Uh, Free France, I just realized I still have regular France's round on, on the chart. Free France has uh, an income of five francs. So it's not a hell of a lot for them, but it's... Uh, what they get. It is what it is. Uh, the French Navy uh, ceased to exist. What Navy wasn't scuttled uh, all went over to Vichy. So there, there's no free French Navy left whatsoever. Well, no, I'll take that back. There had been, but a Vichy battleship and a free destroyer wound up right next to each other in the North Sea. So uh, the uh, Vichy attacked and sank the uh, destroyer, taking uh, a damage. Oh, and I'm a liar again. The French have one, Free France has one submarine right here in the English Channel. The rest of it, what they have, is concentrated down here in the Med off Marseille. And then they have one submarine, you can see, right over here around the Straits of Malacca. And that's that. Okay. All right. After creating Vichy France, Hitler was feeling pretty damn good, dancing a jig in Paris, and said, you know what? I'm going to give that uh, bulldog Churchill a bloody lip. So Germany declared war on the Commonwealth. And <clears throat> Admiral uh, Donitz's U-boat arm immediately began convoy raiding. Wheel of Vengeance. They hit the West Africa line for two. They got the Mediterranean line for four. The East Atlantic line for four. And the, uh, what is that? The West Atlantic line for two. So, Four and four is eight, and another four is twelve. That, uh, that cut into the British Treasury pretty bad. Okay, after beating up the Brits, the Germans attacked Trondelag from southern Norway 
with uh, the two Marines that were down there and captured the territory without loss. Okay, already got the battleship in the North Sea. Uh, there had been another one. Somewhere around there, there had been a free French transport which was torpedoed and sunk by a submarine. Somewhere right in that general area. Okay. Had a little interruption there. So get back on track here. Um, after everything else that happened, Great Britain aligned Belgium and uh, took pay, took possession of the Congo. Well, then, that's where we are. Okay. Germany spent eight oil, and since they are now at war with major power, they collected their full amount of ten. Uh, they get three from neutral Romania. They get one from, uh, help me out a little bit there. Three from neutral Romania, one from this well in uh, Bohemia, one from the well in uh, Berlin. That makes five. One from uh, neutral Venezuela makes six. And then one synthetic per undamaged major factory, that's four more, gives them a total of 10. Uh, De Vichy recruitment role uh, failed, as did the recruitment role for Argentina. And then Germany collected they're 43 plus uh, five for Molotov and uh, their other wartime bonuses, giving them a total of 68 racks marks to spend next turn. That includes the, uh, I think it was 18 that uh, they took off the French when they captured Paris. All right, I believe that does it for them. Now on to the Soviets, who also had a rather big turn. Uh, try to square that up a little bit. Back up there a little bit. The Soviets rolled stage three of heavy armor in wartime economy. They didn't do any spy ring rolls because they're at their limit. Uh, they did turn a French spy in Moscow into a double agent. Let me show you Moscow there. See, the British are the only ones that have a spy there currently that hasn't been doubled. All right. Since they uh, pulled off the coup in Central America, uh, Barry had got to licking his lips, thinking about uh, something Latin, women, men, who knows. But anyway, he decided to uh, talk Stalin into spending three rubles on influence roles for Latin America. Uh, they also bought seven infantry and two cavalry. Uh, Chairman Mao had uh, five IPPs to spend and bought a cavalry and a militia. Well, Barry wound up with egg on his face because his influence in South America came up short. They, they rolled for Central America, Venezuela, and Colombia, and missed all three of them. Of course, that's not hard to do when 
you have to uh, roll a one in order to be successful. All right, then Stalin decided he's tired of sitting around watching everybody else do stuff. By God, he wants to do some stuff too. So as you can see there, he did. There had been a torpedo boat and a uh, submarine in this sea zone. Well, they went over here and declared war on the uh, Empire of the Rising Sun and attacked this fleet carrier. The sub got his first strike hit to damage the carrier. And then I think they had... Everybody else missed on the first round, including the Japanese uh, defensive roles. All missed. The torpedo boat destroyer decided to get in there for the motherland and try to, to get another hit and missed. And then uh, one of the fighters killed him in return. So... Uh, the submarine decided to submerge and try again another time. So now the Soviets and Japan are at war. Stalin continued on by attacking Eastern Manchuria from uh, whatever Vladivostok's territory is there. They got in there and uh, liberated the uh, territory for the Chai Coms without loss. Then we had a couple of guys from here and a guy from here come in and attack Northern Manchuria. They got that job done losing one infantry in the process liberating another territory for uh, Chairman Mao. Well, after that, seeing the success that his uh, communist brethren had, the chairman decided to go to work on his own. So everything that he had in Peking and uh, Suyan marched into Rihi on the attack, and as you can see, they got the job done. They, they wiped the Japanese out for the loss of six infantry. It was expensive, but they booted the Japanese out of northern China, and they took the minor factory away from them. You know, the Chinese, of course, can't use that, that minor factory right now, but if they do manage to hang on and grow and evolve into a, a major power, they'll already have a factory to work with. Now, for the victory here in Rihi, the surviving uh, Chaikam infantry was uh, promoted. That's the, I believe that's the uh, Eighth Army marker that's underneath him. Okay, then the Chai Kongs did some non-combat moves. The long and the short of it is, uh, whereas Peking was empty after the attack, they moved, uh, couple of cavalry in there from uh, Xinghai here. Cavalry don't suffer a mountain penalty, so they were able to go their two spaces in non-combat to get into Peking. This infantry, I don't know, can you see it? I know you can. This infantry moved there from uh, Xinkang out here, see? 
the three infantry that were sitting in this territory went to Xinxi. The, the chairman is gearing up for some action, it looks like. Well, with nine territories under his control, including these liberated territories up here in Manchuria, it wasn't hard for him to hit a recruitment role. So he chose to put an infantry in Peking. And then he put his build on. Uh, let's see, one cavalry was moved in there during non-combat because his build went into Peking as well, which was a cavalry and a militia. So he's actually really not in too bad a shape. Now, for their own for their own non-combat moves, uh, the Soviets did do some action over here. The cavalry that was here slid over to uh, keep this territory from being unoccupied. Uh, the militia that was here in Cheetah moved over. They were allowed to move one space in home country. And then uh, two infantry were railed over uh, from the western regions. One went here and one went out here. So the Japanese can't come up here and just uh, have free walk-ins or easy walk-ins trying to, to hit back amphibiously. As long as we're right here, I'll show you the two cavalry the Soviets built went into Novosibirsk. Now for the Soviet non-combat, over here, we moved an infantry and a motorized infantry up to East Poland, moved an infantry up to Lubelski, two infantry, a tank destroyer up to southern Belarusia, two infantry and a tank destroyer to uh, western Ukraine. The uh, aircraft from Leningrad went to Smolensk and Kiev. And that's about it. And then uh, the Soviet build went one infantry each to Smolensk and Kiev the other five infantry to Oral Kursk. And then since the Soviets are at war with a major now, they collect their full allotment of oil, which is uh, seven. They've got, where are we at here? I got it. Do like that. There we go. We've got uh, three and three down here on the coast of the Caspian Sea for six. And we have one here in Oral Kursk for seven. The Soviets spent four oil that turn, so they had a net gain of three. And they got five for their sleeping bear roll. Uh, bumping their base income up to 24. They also have a, a plus three for uh, a plus three for how did they get that plus three? They got a plus one from taking Karjala. Where did the other two come from? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Now, wait a minute. Is that right? Plus one for Karjala. Yeah, plus one for Karjala. Plus one for Lithuania. And I believe they got a plus one for East Poland. Yes. So that's where that three comes from. Okay, and since they are at war with Major now, uh, they get their wartime uh, bonuses. So the Soviets 
had saved one ruble, I believe. No, they didn't. Um, where did they? 21 and 6 is 27, 3 is 30. Yeah, they, they did. They had 31 rubles and spent 30. So they saved one. They added uh, another 35 to it. So they'll have 36 next turn. The Chicoms got themselves up to 8. And since they are at war with Japan, a major power, uh, they get a plus two bonus for having a shared border with the Soviet Union. Uh, and you can do that two different ways now because you can also say or show a shared border right here. Uh, or here, either one. So, yep, they, they pretty well got that bonus locked up. So, uh, they will have 10 to spend next turn. I think that covers it. This, this was a, a pretty big turn all the way around. And we'll see what happens from here. Ozark Outpost, over and out.